Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this cute little bear. Uh, we're going to do it step by step from start to finish tonight. Uh, I've got my husband with me. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> He's going to be man and chat during our live show. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, welcome. If you're new to our channel, we're glad to have you join us. We're going to be painting live tonight. We do this twice a week, and uh, well, at least right now in 2022. Who knows what's <laughs> going to happen next year? <laughs> but uh, I'm using a 12 by 12 inch canvas tonight. This is the watercolor canvas board from Fredericks, and I've painted it with um, black and burnt umber. So just half and half black and burnt umber. Sorry, my mic is in here. I don't know why just that's showing on the camera. But regular, kind of regular black? Regular, well, carbon black and burnt umber. So, okay. yes. Um, let's go over our colors. Get the mic out of there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly covered. <laughs> carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna. I added a raw sienna. If you don't have that one, just add some... Um, brown to our yellow oxide, which is our next color, uh, cadmium red medium and ultramarine blue, and then some unbleached titanium and titanium white and some gloss glazing liquid. I'm going to go uh, pretty kind of loose with this tonight. What? Oh, subscribe. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Mark's, Mark's doing this to me and I'm like, I don't know. What are you pointing at? <laughs> it's a new fancy thing. Oh, did. yeah. We got a new subscribe. Subscribe. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Okay. Here you go, babe. <sighs> subscribe and click the bell oh, icon yeah. for notifications. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm ready. I was ready that time. <laughs> so for brushes, we're going to be using um, some Princeton brushes tonight. They're a brush sponsor, so we use their products. Love them. Um and Fredericks is our canvas sponsor, so thank you to both of them. We don't get paid, we just get free brushes and stuff. So mm -hmm. we can, right. I was already using them, so it's a good, it's a win-win. Um, I'm using the eight bright for the background and the kind of just blocking in the bear. And then um, I've got a two round um, in their Summit series and those long green handles. And then I'm going to be using a few of the blender brushes. I've got the quarter inch and three eighths inch blender brushes. Those are one of my favorite. They're kind of a synthetic like hog bristle almost. They're stiff bristles and they've got this rounded shape but kind of flat on one side so you can kind of do some interesting uh, things and they work really good for fur. If you don't have one of those you could probably use a, like a deer foot stippler um, which is kind of an angled stiff bristled brush or even just like a hog bristle. They have them really cheap um, in craft stores and things um, so you could grab one of those too. That that would be, work well but these were these are nice because they're um, synthetic so they don't get soft in water all right and then I've got my angle brushes here and uh, two round in the smaller size the velvet touch so okay I'm I'm like talking a lot about <laughs> stuff I need to just get going here okay so to draw out our bear um, he's gonna take up most of this Base. He's kind of a, you know, we're doing a portrait tonight, so he's going to like kind of be right in this general area. So I'm just going to kind of mark out sort of where my boundaries are. And then the bottom of his chin is oh, about right in here somewhere, kind of uh, about on the quarter. So if you like split the canvas in half and then like quartered it again, the bottom of the chin is kind of right in here. In, right in the middle really and then if you want to you can make a line down the middle to kind of help you as long as you get can draw a straight line which I obviously can't um, and then the top is gonna be right about the same so kind of uh, the top and bottom are kind of right on the quarter there ish and this kind of curves up like that so that's our kind of shape there generally um, kind of oval shape a little bit wider on the sides it's going to come down here close to the edge and just go off the edge right here and then come down to the corner on this side um, and then there's like a 
a shape that kind of comes like this that does around the face and comes in here like that a little bit shaggy shaggy bear and then the fur around the face kind of comes in underneath the chin and kind of circles the face like this okay and then the top is going to just kind of meet up with this a little bit angle that up and angle this down right here round that out okay so you should end up with kind of a heart shape right here on the outline and then the the little chin is just up from that a little bit okay so once we've got that then what we can do is sort of take this space that is um, from here to um, here to here which is the basically the head space and we're going to not quite go halfway let me see yeah it's just about halfway so if we kind of do like this you generally it's kind of a rule of thumb that the eyes are going to be like about halfway down the face that's pretty much people animals a lot of a lot of things not you know it's not always but that's kind of a general rule of thumb so look at that and that um you know whatever it is you're you're doing um it can make it a little bit easier to um manage so oh. i think that they are just above the half on here so it's just kind of like right above the half what mark's laughing I, I, at i should know i should have used side cam there <clears throat> with so they could see what you're doing no it's okay no. <laughs> i was holding up my chalk <laughs> could they see it no they probably couldn't no, it was yeah, probably yeah, just off yeah. i was holding up my chalk at, and my reference photo to see where the eyes were on the half yeah. <laughs> so it's really helpful honestly yeah, yeah. and actually something thinner would probably be even more helpful because the chalk was sort of in the way um but yeah okay so kind of right in there the mouth is so here's the chin the the mouth of the top part of the mouth is going to curve down like this and then you're going to have this area right here now our eyes if we kind of figure out where our eyes are going to be and then make sure that they are about the same distance from the outside of the um of this part of the face so and this is going to come in just a little bit right here so um don't don't yeah so right there boom boom right there okay so the eyes will be like right in here somewhere and they are curved out or curved down a little bit got a little bit and there's a little bit up above too so kind of like that it looks kind of funky doesn't it <laughs> right now oh, okay so then the nose part is gonna go right in between and angle out and meet up right here and then we're gonna have I think I need to move these up they, I do I need to move these up because I'm, I'm running out of space for my nose it's not weird at all <clears throat> I have the guy who does the uh, Bloom County cartoons mm -hmm. in my Facebook feed and he's been posting uh, sketches that he's been working on. Yeah. And it's just, you know, a piece of paper, and it's the same figure three or four different times. Right. In, in different... Different ways. Know, ways of being, yeah, or completed. And it's, you know, it's the same thing. It's kind of a wireframe drawing. and Yeah. So he can get to how he wants it to look. So you're not weird. Okay. Good. Well, All at right. Least so like that. that. <laughs> what? <laughs> at least at not least about that. At least in that, that way, yeah. Okay. Okay, so from here to here, uh, from here to here. So that's going to be the bottom or the middle part of the eye. Yeah, the bottom of the eye, the bottom of the eye. So from the top of the nose to the chin. So the eyes need to come up here. So right in here somewhere. And that was our halfway mark. So I did say that oh, I thought it was kind of above the halfway and then I drew it on the half so we just need to move it up a little bit there we go and so then our eye 
shape is going to come around like that and kind of flatten out and come around and angle back this way. That'll be our face shape. And actually, the closer you have them together, the more the cuter they'll be. So if you want to up the cuteness scale, kind of make the nose a little bit bigger and make the eyes a little bit um, more close together and a little rounder. I think that looks pretty good. Ooh, how did I get paint on there? I wasn't paying attention there. I got paint on there. Weird. I had it on my hand. It must have went on one of the brushes. And now it's treatment with the background. I know. That's okay. I'll paint it over. It's okay. no biggie. And that's why you paint the background black. Yeah. Okay. And then... Um, And then our ears are going to be basically kind of at an angle out. If you like make an angle toward that corner, whoops, toward the corner, our ears are going to kind of split that difference in here. So they'll be right in here like that. And then again, kind of from the eye out and then our little ear. He's so cute. And they're pretty... Pretty small ears for such a big animal, really. When you consider deer have, you know, tiny face and huge ears, it's kind of funny. Okay, so that's good. I think that that's pretty close, and that'll give us a good starting spot. We can move things around if we need to as we get going. Okay. Well, not much is going to sneak up on a bear and eat it. Tr true. True dads. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So good. like, I, I don't care. I don't He need doesn't ears. need big ears. He's like, fine. I'm... Yeah. I'll, I'll eat you. Good point. Good point. Thank you. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I just wonder if he hasn't pierced. <laughs> I honestly, I, I before the show, I was telling Mark, I was like, I kind of really just want to paint, paint flowers on the top of his head. <laughs> Probably make some people mad, though, that we're looking forward to the winter bear. But <laughs> why not, right? All right, so I've made up some gray that's got burnt umber and burnt sienna. I'm sorry, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to just kind of go over my drawing edge just a little bit so that when I do my fur, it'll be, I'll go over this. So I'm going to just kind of paint this in and leave a little bit of that dark showing through here and there. And I'm even going to grab some blue and little bit of the yellow and make kind of a greenish green green gray to do back here and I'm just gonna kind of be real random about it I really don't have to reload. These brushes hold a lot of paint, so these um, 6100 series especially, they hold way more paint than you really think they would. So just picking up a little bit and then just brush and brush and brush. <laughs> this goes forever. I um, listened to a podcast today about from the owner of, or the past owner. I don't know what his title is now. He still works for Princeton Brushes, but um, He's probably a consultant or something. Maybe. I don't know. He he was talking about some of the new brushes that they were going, but he was also talking about just uh, um, oh, just the history of kind of how they've developed different brushes. It was really fascinating and uh, basically he was saying, you know, just depends kind of, you know, people ask what kind of brush you should buy, but it depends on what you're going to be doing with it, you know, and what your budget is. If you're only going to be painting one painting and you only need it, you know, for one thing, then you don't really need. There's some, you know, decent beginner brushes that are going to be just fine. But if you're going to be painting a lot, then, you know, you may want to invest with a, in a better brush if you can afford it. And I'm all about buying the best brush you can get because it makes a big difference. These Getting a good brush will change your painting experience 
I didn't realize how much <laughs> until I started investing in good brushes and taking care of them and washing them. Well, being sure you're washing them if you're going to invest in a good brush. But I've got links down in the description for the materials that I'm using tonight. So, all right. So I added some little swatches of like whitish, you know, little branches and things. There's all kinds of stuff going on back here, but I'm not going to be super literal about it. I just kind of want to give some indication of some stuff going on. And we're going to get to splatter tonight. Uh, <laughs> that is so funny. Why? Because Patty had just posted, I predict splatters will be involved <laughs> Patty later. Patty is right. Patty, you would be right. <laughs> Gold star. <laughs> Yeah, but there's no prizes. Ding, so. ding, ding. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> okay, so I'm mixing these three colors, the raw sienna, burnt umber, and unbleached titanium, and making kind of like a soft, um, soft sable brown. That's good. And I'm going to just kind of dip between all of these colors, um, and start filling in my bear, like kind of my main areas of my bear fur. And in the darker areas here, I'm just going to kind of use the burnt umber to add some texture to my dark areas. And then what I'll do at the very end is I'll glaze. So if you've ever like been like, what's glazing and how do I do it? Um, I'll show you here at the end what we'll do. So after we get our bear kind of all painted and it's all dried, then what we can do is kind of glaze over it and we'll add back in some of these shadows and things that we're going to be covering up as we add our details to our bear. So stay tuned for that. You know why we'll up until 8 o'clock. What? You know why we'll be stay tuned until, until 8 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And then oh, Press, well, and yeah. starts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying 10 foot cans. That's all I need to say. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay, I'm not. Marks. I'm not a. I'm not a believer any longer. I. I. I think I got you started on that show, and then I've kind of. <coughs> kind of decided that to... they're gonna find the Easter Bunny, so don't you worry. Okay. Well, I figure they've probably ruined whatever it was down there in the beginning, anyways, with all of the drilling and thing and exploding things they've been doing so <laughs> all right so kind of darkening around the eyes i'm going to go slowly kind of build up these lighter layers since we've got you know we took the trouble to put in our dark on the background i'm just going to kind of use that to my advantage and let it build up slowly so i'm kind of just using this brush and letting it see how it's kind of like flaring out if i kind of um, use a really light touch and don't don't have my paint watered down too much can kind of get a light feathery brush stroke which kind of works for this hair that's like around the face and it's going to go up around the eye think of eyebrows you know growing up and around this way and that's kind of pretty much how the rest of the hair around the face is going to grow and then under the eye it's coming down to the either side of the nose and out. So kind of like a star almost like it's like that. Okay. Cute. And then for the middle part of the nose, I'm going to get a little bit of the lighter color. You know, some yellow oxide and burnt or um, raw sienna here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush because this brush is a little bit too heavy on there. It's kind of going on solid and I don't want that to happen. I want it to be kind of split apart. So I'm going to get the three inch blender and that'll split up the hairs a little bit. Let it go on a little bit softer. There we go. And I would use the largest brush that you can fit into the space easily. 
and it's kind of a good rule of thumb as you're working. The larger brush will cover more ground. It'll just be a little bit easier. You want to use a tiny, tiny little detail brush for a bear this size. Okay. Getting some of that raw sienna and yellow oxide. Mixing those two together and then adding a little bit of the little bit of this burnt umber color that we had too and the um, unbleached titanium so just kind of some of the lighter color somebody would like to know do they have to use a black background no no you could you could have started I, I thought about starting with like a burnt umber background um, it just saves you a step because otherwise you're going to have to paint the black background black burnt umber to start with before you put in this these colored these lighter colored hairs here. So if you don't have your background painted, then you know you would paint it dark and then and then start. You know, so so yes and no. <laughs> if you're if you're not doing it before you start painting it, you need to do it before you start doing this part. That makes sense. Because you'll need it underneath all of this. Otherwise the colors just won't really show up. All right. He's not going to be quite photorealistic tonight, I don't think. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'll try to get him close, but since I kind of did a really quick drawing here, I'm, he's going to be a little bit more on the sort of cartoony side. or Not cartoony, but you get, you know, a little bit more like stylized, I should say. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah, kind of just... Trying to keep it more beginner friendly tonight. So, and that the sort of photorealistic stuff gets a little bit um, intimidating sometimes. So, just kind of showing you a way to get decent looking bear using pretty easy techniques. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the raw sienna and around the face here, I'm gonna just kind of go underneath the chin here. And the chin in our photo is like iced over. It's got ice all over it, so we can kind of just leave it dark for now. We'll paint it in later. But got that. And then there's this kind of light I'm going to turn it on its side and see how the hairs, if you look at it, the hairs kind of clump together and little, almost kind of like little strings or like, I don't know, not strings, but little clumps basically. And so I'm going to kind of use the side of the brush to give that a look. Your cam computer. All right. Getting some of the lighter color here at the top. And now I can go over the top of my background a little bit. And again, all this part in our photograph is covered with snow. So I'm just going to kind of guess what it. <laughs> what it is. It's kind of a yellowish brown here. Okay, so I'm going to be... I'm just going to kind of go up and around here. Up and over. That may answer what a bear does in the woods. What? Oh.
as I'm doing my like final layers on this kind of fur, you're just going to want to make sure that wherever you've got um, a, a section like this, that you make sure that you blend it in really well. And um, going over it from <clears throat> starting at the bottom here from the base and then going out towards where um, where the hairs over overlap. So I'm going to start with this one and then, you know, continue here and here and that kind of thing. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to start, you know, kind of overlapping. I'm getting a little bit lighter color here just so that I can see it over the top of that. Doesn't have to be super obvious. And then like right in here, it's a little bit darker. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that background blue and use a little bit of that in the fur too. I always like to use like whatever's kind of around if I've got a area that I can in the, like from the background or whatever. A lot of times the colors around will kind of play off of the face and alter the colors just a little bit. You know, don't want them to be blue, obviously, but just gonna give it a little bit extra detail. This is the 3 8 inch angle, or the, no, I'm sorry, the 3 8 inch blender. right now but we'll get there and just kind of know this going in as you're doing this you're you're probably going to be at least if you're like me you're going to be thinking to yourself okay well this does not look right you know this can't be right I'm doing something wrong and then you'll like try to fix it and mess it up so just kind of feel follow along the tutorial I'll get you there um, it'll look worse before it looks better and that's normal with acrylics because you kind of have to have all these layers in here for it to start to come together. So I'm going to get some of the darker colors because it wasn't covering up over the top of that outside color there. Get a little bit of water, a little bit of the... And just keep spraying your canvas or your paints as you go to it'll help there we go and it pretty quickly like blends in so it kind of has that dark or that bright around the edge and then it pretty quickly blends into the lighter color so I'm going to kind of get pick up some of those darker colors and just blend over that edge like I said you kind of do the outside and then you kind of go towards the inside and that will help cover up any of these you know starting points of our lines this far ear too big in fact I did you can see already I kind of made his ear too big I think or maybe I need to bring his face out a little bit more yeah I think I just need to bring his face out a little bit more up yeah there we go okay and then there's these little just these little sections of that dark that Do that and then I'm going to get the dark color come in the opposite direction 
overlap this way. And that'll just kind of soften up both of those lines and make it look more realistic. What? What are you laughing at? Cashmere okay, just came up here and mm -hmm. she kind of reached up and just touched my hand. Mm -hmm. Like, hey. Like, hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Prepare. She's not even asking for permission to come no. aboard. She's just coming on She's in. Like, hey, I'm coming in. Just won't make room. Did you started the show without me? I didn't know we were starting. That's your cat. <laughs> so, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. Um, yep. Yeah. We had a super romantic Valentine's Day last yeah, night. Yeah, it was like super. I mean, it's like, you know, like a dream getaway. <laughs> Couch time. Uh, what did we do? I was working. Li lifestyles of the rich and famous. I was working. <clears throat> and. Or not rich and not famous. Yeah. So, well, I was watching TV. Mark was. We got some takeout from the all you can eat Chinese buffet. Yep. He yeah. sat on the couch and... It was great. Hey. With the animals and there yep. you go. Yep, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> got marked the wrong wallet. So we're even because he got me too many flowers and I got him the wrong wallet. So we were two for two for Valentine's presents this year. Check. Well, it was the right wallet, just not the color. Just not the color. But that's okay. I, yeah, I know. I... It's almost as good as the wrong purse. You sent me, the, I, you told me, the, showed me the picture and everything. I just thought you told me not to get a different color. And obviously not. So we both listen really well, obviously. Well, <laughs> I was trying to be hip, like with all the, with all the kids having uh -huh. those small pocket, front pocket mm -hmm. wallet things. How was it today? Different. <laughs> good new. I'm fighting off the oldness. Uh huh. Like, nope. Get off my lawn. Give me my old wallet back. I need to. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm gonna give it some time. Okay. Get used to it. Yeah. All right. I'm widening out the nose a little bit. I didn't make him quite wide enough. I don't think. I'm using a little bit of that blue from the background for the top of the nose. And the center parts kind of got like a highlight around the nostrils a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to decide. I think I think my eyes are still too low. I I, I do. I think they're kind of still too low. Crazy. So when I put them in, I'll probably move them up just a little bit. Mark's trying to type with the cat in his lap or in his face. Mm -hmm. Trying to see over cat. It's a skill. I'm sure lots of people have gotten better at that this year. <laughs> Typing with cats. Mm -hmm. Or work from home with cats. Cats edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a little bit better. Widened out the nose a little bit. Of course, using this brush, it's going to be a little bit sort of messy because it's not going to be super precise. I'm going to get a little bit of the like burnt umber color here. And I'm going to move this down just a little bit and then just kind of smudge out that edge. It's not like really a hard, well, there's kind of a hard line on this part, the bottom part, but up in here it kind of is sort of softer. And cute. I'll widen 
out right here a little bit. Okay, I'm getting there. Getting closer, just making small edits. This is how I kind of like to paint. I, I know it's not like precise. I'm not, I don't do like a really detailed drawing. I just like to kind of play with it as I go. It's, it, it's more organic and I kind of find like I get like more layers in. It's just kind of more interesting to me. So you see me moving things around. That's pretty, pretty normal for me. Normally when I'm teaching though, I kind of like to have more of a finished design in mind before I start, but we're winging it tonight. It's a little bit, a little bit more loose style. also kind of angles out right here like as it comes down around the mouth too so I kind of brightened up that bottom of the mouth okay so now I brought that down a little bit more it looks a little bit better but I think still I'm gonna move the eyes up just a tiny bit In that burnt umber. I'm going to kind of push that up just a little bit. If you've got any areas right here like where it's just not kind of in the right direction or not blending in correctly I'm just gonna get a little bit of my burnt umber color to kind of get a little bit of darker color back in over that lighter color or you know if it's a darker color then you put a lighter color on top and just kind of counteract whatever is going on that you want to change these kind of go off to the side this way and then they go down right here, like we have it in and out. And with this brush, I find that I kind of loading it up fairly thick with paint will kind of allow me to move a little quicker. And scrub as I go. Darker color, burnt umber. Kind of going over that edge a little bit, blend it in. Get a little bit of this gray. Add it to my color here and just kind of make a little bit of a gray color for the edge going out into. No, and yeah, this definitely needs to come out. I'm just skipping around here. Go ahead and try to just get everything sort of one layer on here at least, and then we can start playing with the proportions and give, give it a second layer. Get the darker burnt umber here. Go back in with the ears. I'm 
Okay, so this kind of has this, this ear thing. Down across. <laughs> cute. Oh, bear, you're so cute. Why are you cute? I don't know. I'm sure he wouldn't be cute if you've met him in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> we had a bear in our neighborhood, and we are not like in the wilderness by any means. We, we're, I mean, we're in a kind of a rural-ish area, but we get deer and stuff like that. But, but yeah, we've never had a bear before, and he was in the tree literally across the street from our little baby bear. He got lost, so I think. They had to come and get him, Re relocate him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would not have been. Yeah, he was up in a tree across the street. Huh? He was up in the tree across the street. Yep. He was Just lost. Sleeping. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of meet up with this area under the chin, and then this all kind of comes together and makes this almost like a cowl right around his neck. Okay, so we've got, I need to kind of map out his face a little bit better. So we've got this area right here that's going around his face. Not right there, and it goes down, angles down towards the mouth. So right here is a little bit darker on the outside of that. And then this side is not as obvious, but it has it too. So kind of above the eyes, <clears throat> around, I'm gonna mark up around the eyes. He's got these little highlights that kind of make him look like he's curious. He's kind of looking up and That's too bright right there, but just marking it in so I kind of have an idea of where I'm working at. There we go. Blending that in. So you give it a smoky eyes? Smoky eyes? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Give him a smoky eyes, yes. <laughs> yes. And she didn't get the pun either. What? What pun? Smoky Bear. Well, no, I got it. Oh, okay. I got it. And Smoky Eyes. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so, so what I was saying <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So what you're saying is that I didn't get that you got it. <laughs> Check. get the burnt these three colors with a little bit of the raw sienna and just a tiny touch of black here and this is the color I'm working with here use that kind of softish reddish slightly reddish color here
Oh, wow, I am really zoomed in. Mm -hmm. Cool, I'm gonna be moving, so. Okay, well, when I do the eyes, I'll let you know. We'll be ready for it. Okay, and so over here, I'm going to get some of my yellow oxide and this unbleached titanium. And so I've already kind of done the outside area there and I'm just going to have to transition into my darker color. So I'm going to kind of start there and sort of just peter off with kind of lighter strokes and then get my darker color and come in opposite and come in around it. I'm just going to blend it in and add brush strokes in and around it. blend that in. And it's just kind of a matter of going back and forth and back and forth with these light areas and dark areas and until you get it the way you know it looks good to you. So um, it's all about contrast though. I, I would say that if um, if there's one thing that people generally struggle with is that they will um, they'll go in and paint the light areas first and then they'll end up with a lot of light valued areas because that's a that's the part that your eye is drawn to so that's the part you're going to notice so you really have to kind of train yourself to look for the dark areas in this kind of in the fur and in even especially in your light areas of your fur and get those in but um, don't don't paint out all your dark areas when you do so um bring this out just a little bit and again I'm kind of getting that light color but I need some dark to counteract it because there's some dark in there even in our lighter areas peeking through and shining through the back behind underneath Okay, so we're definitely doing better on the shape of the face. Get a little bit of the darker color and go from the ear. Burnt umber here. Go from the ear down. There's just a little bit of this darker color. Kind of peeking out. And again, get a fairly decent amount of paint so that it comes off over the top of my light gray in the background there. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here in this area. And then I'm going to transition right here between the dark in the light areas. I've got a little bit of both on my brush. Burnt umber and that raw sienna. A little bit of both. And it'll kind of see how it's kind of streaking both colors. That's what I want it to do. And just reload however often you need to. I'm probably going to have to do it fairly often. closer each new layer. Now I'm going to start to kind of be a little bit lighter 
with it. I've got the darker color down underneath and I'm wanting to just kind of adding a few little flecks of this yellow oxide and raw sienna here to show some direction and dimension to my fur right here. And it also helps if I will like vary my line so like right here when I did it, it I kind of went in a straight line which I probably shouldn't have done because now I have to kind of break that up a little bit so I'm just going to go in here and kind of go over my line with a little bit of the burnt umber kind of right beside it and overlapping it a little bit just to kind of break that up so it's not like a straight line and then getting some more of that lighter color again and going back in and I'm going to zigzag it so I'm kind of getting a little bit more random coverage here. There we go. titanium here this is kind of my highlight color and again gonna very lightly just kind of scrape it so that it transfers just kind of some texture basically kind of like a dry brush almost only my paints fairly wet where it's kind of really obvious color shifts or you know changes so that I've got a smooth transition be between my fur areas and no real obvious like lines or no areas that are like look solid I want them all to kind of have a little bit of texture a little bit of solid so I'm just put a little bit of that darker color back in because it's it was light and keep on adding my lighter color over the top here <laughs> looks like he's got an eyebrow right here Let me fix that. <laughs> just that a little bit good point to talk about patreon sure yeah we've got a we'll have the traceable for this i already did it um so it's it's a little bit more detailed than the one than what i got going on here <laughs> <laughs> it'll be correct anatomy <laughs> but we've got that for my um patrons for the two dollar level right now at least and then um, eventually we're going to be doing some memberships on our website so that's going to be starting here pretty soon so um, if you're watching in future you may find a different link but right now we're using patreon and our patrons will still have access so if you sign up for that we're not gonna it won't change for you it's just kind of doing something new next year this coming year possibly if all works out <laughs> sorry I don't know why I got into that it's not the time <laughs> we'll be announcing more about that as, so right as now, my right. new, le new website is ready in 2027 you may check it, right. it may not be <laughs> Patreon may be something else but right <laughs> 
Right now it's Patreon. So yes. if you're watching this right now and you're new, Crystal's over there, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art at the mm-hmm. $2 level. Yep. And then there's a $5 level where you get that plus a bonus video, which we'll be doing this Sunday. Yep. <clears throat> and I have no idea what it is. I forget. Landscape. Oh, landscape. And then the $10 level gets all that. Plus it, they also have a challenge image that they do work on each Thursday. So yeah. check it out. All right. So I'm making a like a dark red here using the black. I like using black to um, to shadow red. It's it it actually um, is a pretty good color. He looks like it's like got lipstick right now, but it's got a little bit of a reddish tint right in there. And then I'm going to get my get some of this blue in my unbleached titanium. Maybe a little bit of white. It's fairly light. And I'm going to kind of just brush on the lip. It still looks like it's got a little bit of that pink in there, but that's okay. All right, so it's time to start in a little bit more detailed here. I'm going to get my number two round here. This is the bigger of the round brushes. I'm going to get my black and we'll put in the details of the nose and finish this mouth up. So the mouth, I need two. And it's about the same width as the nose. So that kind of tells you sort of where to start your lines. Kind of right in there somewhere. And I'm just going to kind of outline it. It's got a Kind of a dark line around it and then below it I'm just gonna kind of wipe my brush out and pull that paint down just a little bit into the into the fur that's below it and then get some of that black and make sure that I have it nice and dark on the top of the mouth just over the part where the red went There we go. And it looks too outlined to me, so I'm going to get some of my color that's just above it on the lip. And it's going to go over that line and just smooth out that. That doesn't look so outlined. It's okay to be outlined like right by the lip there. It's, it is outlined, but like right here between the mouth and the and the upper lip there. Just one that's a little softer. Okay, getting a little bit of that gray and a little bit of the bl- blue. And I'm gonna kind of go a little bit of black. I'm gonna kind of pull that black out on either side here into some gray on the upper lip, just under the nose. All right, and then I'm going to get some more white and and this blue again was, this, this gray blue is the ultramarine blue in Burnt Umber. So that's what I'm dipping into here. I've got some white. And I want to highlight down the middle of the nose here. And this is a little bit light. We get a little bit more black here. There we go. Kind of do a, yeah, there we go, with like a mid gray color. Go up. And it kind of meets in the middle here and splits down when it gets closer to the lip. And then it goes off at an angle here and here. And down. And then there's get a little bit darker color and there's a little bit of a 
lighter gray just on the inside. And I'm just going to kind of go along that outer edge and blend out that line. Right there. Okay. See that? And then a little bit more white, a little bit of this glaze. Just a little bit of transparent color. Slightly. And I'm just going to kind of pull down there, do a highlight on the nose, and then I'm going to get my black. And this is where the glazing is going to come in. I'm going to get my black and a little bit of that glaze, and I'm going to go over that line and push it around while it's still wet. You can do this after it's wet, after it's dry too. So either one, but I'm just going to soften up that edge into straight black and then get the straight black, and this is going to be kind of a black area right here and inside the nose. It's going to be nice and dark black. And then right here, kind of at the bottom, coming out. It's going to be black also. And then there's like a little bit of black sort of on the corners right here. So. And then again, kind of getting that lighter color with my, I actually just mix these two together. So the this color and this color, the black and the highlight color, mixing them together, get a little bit of glaze, and I'm just gonna go over that border between them and just kind of push the color around until it looks blended for me. And, you know, you just kind of keep going back and forth until you kind of get a decent smooth blend there. I'm going to bring that side up just a little bit with a little bit of the darker black. There we go. So he's got a... Cute. Between me pressing the wrong button, you're too fast for a side cam. Oh, you <laughs> pressed the wrong button? Yeah, I pressed the pellet. Blown up first and uh -huh. requited it. Oh, that's why. <laughs> hey, do you know how uh, bears catch fish? With their paws? <clears throat> no, they're bare hands. Oh. <laughs> Take care of that. <laughs> I walked right into that one. I knew, I knew better. Knew better. <laughs> <laughs> Number here. How are we on time? Oh, an hour. We're doing good. We're doing good. I'm kind of boogieing through here pretty fast. So if you guys have questions about what I'm doing, make sure to pop those into chat. I got them if you want to see them now. About what I'm doing? They had a question. I got a couple questions. you want to see them? Are they about what I'm doing right now? Or? Right this second, no. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it later. Okay. Yeah. Stick on. Catch you. Stay on target here so don't get distracted. It's a drop. Yeah. Okay. So putting a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna mixture into the eyes. And kind of around the outside of it. Give me a little bit of the black. And this is where I'm going to kind of define the eyes a little bit more. So I'm going to come in a little bit, come around. Top is sort of flat and rounds out here. And I'm just kind of lightly going over sort of like, like we did with the glaze. So just kind of lightly going over with a little bit of light black here, or transparent black, I should say, to outline around the eye. I'm going to push that around a little bit. It'll kind of widen out that eye area a little bit. I'm going to use my finger to push it in. 
There we go. And then let's do it on the other side too. So this side has got a little bit more of a straight line here. His head's tilted just a little bit, so it's not like completely straight on. and just kind of glazing out around just slightly just kind of darkening up that area around the eye sockets like Mark said giving him a smoky eye it's nice and dark right there and I'm going to kind of bring it down almost like in a like a triangle shape right here. So just kind of bring that dark area down there and there a little bit. That's a little too much. So I'm gonna get my blender and a little bit of water. I'm just gonna push it around a little bit. And this is glazing here. I'm just kind of darkening up with the transparent layer. That's all glazing does. It's just like we're leaving the background the way it is and just darkening up yeah there we go so now we've got this nice dark tear like uh, angle pointing down towards the nose I like it okay I'm gonna get a little bit of the unbleached titanium and I'm gonna tap in around the nose right here it's kind of a highlight right there right here and get it as close as I can without touching the nose so I can get it fairly close and then just kind of pushing it out blending it in a little bit right there okay and I'm gonna bring this out a little bit right here on either side some of this raw sienna so this color over here that we sort of had it's dried up on me kind of equal parts sort of a medium medium light brown here and I want to go around the eyes I've got the dark and I just kind of want a little bit of a light around the eye sort of a medium color darker right here coming from the eye angling out just a little bit here and here a little bit darker color kind of right in that little spot right there kind of meets up with that triangle area that we did before under the eye it's about the same color so ish and this should go just above the eye and then I want to get my lighter color a little bit of unbleached titanium with this burnt umber burnt sienna color that we were just using or burnt umber burnt raw sienna color and I'm just gonna kind of lightly brush that over make sure I've got a nice highlight above the eye right here and here and kind of between the eyes a little bit it's a little bit darker kind of right in here there's like a V of dark 
and then this lighter color kind of comes up around it, dips down, and up and over the eye. Again, if you lose too much of your dark color, you can put some more dark color in. It's just, you know, it's kind of a balancing act between this light and dark here, back and forth. And I did another, like, bear a couple of years ago called Boho Bear. He had glasses. And so this one is kind of a little bit more realistic take on that one. So that one, if you want, it was probably going to be a little bit easier than this one. But I am kind of trying to get it somewhat realistic here, which, you know, always kind of takes a little bit more time and attention to detail. But we're getting there. It's definitely getting some personality. Get some of that burnt umber. That in the ear in the darker area, kind of transition between that light and dark here. And then over here, I've kind of lost my darkest. Get some of that black and put that back in. Cute. And I need to round out his ear here. He looks a little pointy. So I'm just gonna get some of the lighter color and do that. Some of the, these two yellows and a little bit of my unbleached titanium. So now I need to just kind of pay attention to these transitions here and make sure that I got them all looking pretty good and I have dark darks where I want them and light, you know, light transitions. Pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it for the most part. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the light color from the kind of bottom of the mouth up here. There's sort of a a little bit lighter area right here on the cheeks. And you could totally like leave him without any snow too, you know, if you want it, prefer it that way. You could put like a greenish, greenish background in there or whatever, you know, change the background however you want. So this is totally easy to customize and make a little bit more different, a little different. Put 
pushing that paint around a little bit, trying to get that transition between this. There we go. And it kind of merges right in here. So there's like a little bit of that darker color coming down, but it's sort of chin and the this area kind of merges. I'm gonna get a little bit of burnt umber and add that in here. see how that kind of is all like a solid color there I'm just gonna get kind of another color just to break it up a little bit that's what I'm looking for now it's just kind of you know, do I see any areas that are looking a little bit solid or you know not non for like <laughs> not that they don't you know that there are gonna be some areas that are a little bit more solid than others but they they'll still have a little bit of a texture in there so I still want a little bit of something else going on in there. So I'm going to just kind of run some burnt umber through some of these areas just to break it up. where we can glaze some more of the on the fur so I'm gonna get burnt umber and burnt and black which was kind of our original background color and I'm just gonna use it fairly thinned out I've got a little bit of the glazing medium but it's still fairly dark here let's start with that and then as I want it a little bit more transparent I can add more of the glaze if I want it a little bit darker I can add more paint so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to kind of go back over and just add a little bit of this in some areas where I want to just change up the, the value, which is the light and darkness of an area. So change it, make it a little bit darker in some of these areas. And the glazing, what it does is like it, it goes over the top, but you can still see your layers it's not we're not trying to cover up our under layers so we'll be able to see the the brush strokes through that we've already done and then that way we're just kind of adding a little bit of shading to our bear without having to paint over the whole thing again this can help transition some of these areas too if you've got an area that where a fur that looks a little solid you can kind of add a little bit of this and break up some of those areas yeah use a little bit more paint you know where you need it and it'll be a little bit more opaque you know if you use more paint so it'll cover a little bit more and then if you want it more transparent or want more of that background to show through you just add a little bit more glaze it's real easy and once you kind of get the knack for it, you'll probably find that it, you'll be using it in all your paintings <laughs> because it's really helpful. And it's an easy way of kind of changing up the values without having to paint the whole thing over again. Getting a little bit of the burnt umber. I'm going to use it in the ears and do the same thing just with the glaze gonna kind of tint over you'll be able to see that lighter fur through it but it's just gonna darken it up a little bit around the edges okay how you doing on I am doing fantastic good and you look like you're doing pretty good too Thanks. Getting there. 
It might be a little too dark. So if we get a little too dark, just get a little bit of water on a paper towel. And just dab it off. It'll come right off. There we go. Okay. It doesn't work as well with lighter colors. So um, if you're doing the lighter colors, I would just use the paint <laughs> and cover because you're going to need... The, the, they're already not going to cover as well as the darker colors because they're lighter, you know. Um, white will, but, you know, if you're using, depending on the color you're using, white will cover up just about anything eventually. But um, it doesn't work as well for glazing. It just kind of looks cloudy. So we, I really only use the glazing for the darker colors. For the darker colors. Okay, brush over. Okay, I think that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks pretty cute. And I'm gonna finish the eyes here. So I'm gonna get my round again. Whoop, I left them in water. That's not good. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a little bit of the black. And I'm going to create the little inner eye area there. So there should be just a little bit like lighter color. It's really, really similar though to the background color. I'm gonna get a little bit of the yellow oxide, just a slightly lighter color. Burnt umber, slight, maybe a little bit lighter than that. So just want it to show up against that black. Just a little bit. Okay, so the little bit of an eyelid, see? Very subtle. I don't want this to be like a super obvious outline. And then you can also do it in here if you need it. So I'm gonna do it there, and I'm gonna do a little bit right there on the inner eye, okay? And then I'm gonna do a little bit like on the outside of the black eye there. And then, Get my glaze and get my white and a little bit of blue. The ultramarine blue just kind of gives it a little bit extra color. Whatever color you've got going on in your background, you could use that color too and just add a little bit of white. So you could add a little bit of burnt umber to it if you wanted to make it more gray, but I'm going to use this. Add so it's just a tiny touch of blue with my white. And I want it to be like when I brush through it, I should be able to see through the palette. So I want it to be kind of transparent. And I'm going to go and actually before I do this, I'm going to make sure I've got my eye really dark in the center. So get my black and add that in there. So there should be just a little bit of the burnt umber and it can go all the way to the top there. Just a little sliver of the burnt umber, burnt sienna color around. That's so like a very, very dark color. And these, these values are all like, we're talking this and this, you know, we're, we're staying really, really dark here. Okay, now we're going to put the blue on top and I'm going to highlight just below. Make sure your black is dry. Get a little bit more glaze, a little bit more transparent. There we go. So a little bit there. And if it's too opaque, you can kind of use your finger and dab it off. That one's still wet. And then right here, just above, I'm going to kind of go above it a little bit right there. Go. Kind of follow the curve of the eye at the below it. And then kind of go straight at the top a little bit. And that's 
pretty much all we need to do. There's not a whole lot more. I might do, there's just like a little tiny bit of like right in here, like a little kind of few little flecks. So I'll do maybe some there and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool how eyes, it's really not that hard as long as your color, it, the, the key is to have it really transparent like this. It, it goes really, it goes off the rails really fast if you have it a little too dark too quickly. So you can always add more, but you know, I would start really, really light with this and then, you know, just kind of slowly add more of the lighter color. And if you want, you can have a, just like one little, like really bright white highlight, but I'm not really seeing it in his eyes. So I don't think I'm going to add it today. I think this is pretty, pretty much enough. So, and I'm seeing like right here, it's kind of um, solid. So I'm just going to get my, I'm going to use this brush and just kind of, um, try to soften up that line just a little bit right there. Well, I don't really want the stick. It's too wet. Let me get it. I got to get thicker paint. And get some burnt umber. I don't want it super obvious, but just like, yeah, there we go. So if it's not sticking, it's probably too wet. There we go. And I'm going to go just above the eye just a little bit with this color. Just kind of right above the eye. Okay, that's good. Go ahead and zoom out and we can see what that looks like. <clears throat> Let me get. I'm going to do just a little bit right here, too, with this color. Yeah, not bad. I still think I probably could have elongated this just slightly more, like moved his eyes up just maybe like another couple millimeters. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we got it fairly close. All right, so now's the point where if you want to, you can stop. Or we can go in and add some snow. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a little bit smaller brush here. This is the quarter inch blender, and I'm also going to start with my splatters. I think <clears throat> I'm gonna get my white. I don't have my zinc white today, but you could use zinc white if you have it. It's a transparent white. I'm gonna add a little glaze to mine so that it's a little bit more transparent. Adding water will help too. A little bit of water, and you want it really thin so that it just, all you have to do is barely tap and it'll come off your brush. So a little bit more than that. Should be kind of like milk consistency. All right. And I'm using a fan brush. You could use a toothbrush too. But see, just barely tap in here. And you can cover any parts of the there that you don't want to get snow on him, but I generally don't like it like in the eye, so um, I'm going to tap that out right there. But anywhere else is pretty pretty much fair game. And then I'll let it set for a minute <clears throat> or so, just a few seconds, and then just dab it off, and it'll be a little bit softer, a little bit more like see-through, you know, like you're seeing the snow through the lens of the camera how it does, you know, a little bit transparent look like. And it's okay if you get big splatters, that's fine. You know, some of the snowflakes are going to be closer to you, so they'll be bigger. And uh, there we go. So now we've got really nice kind of ghosting of our snowflake shapes. I'm going to get those off there. There. And then we're going to use the smaller of the blenders here and <clears throat> add some snow. And I'm just going to dab it on with my white. I'm going to use a little bit of that gray too. Get a little bit of that blue and burnt umber. And use that both. So a little bit of blue and burnt umber with my white. You can start with that. That'll give us a little, like a little bit of a gray 
to start with, and then we can tap over it with the with my um, with the brighter white. Get closer. So I'm just gonna go over the whole top of this head here, leaving a little bit of little bit of the fur showing. So it's like, ah, oh, we're just <laughs> covering up all that we did, but just go slow because you don't want to get it too solid and end up with a big white mass on his forehead, so. Or her, I'm not sure. We don't know. Could be a girl. Kind of had those eyes like, does somebody need a hug? Oh. Come on over here and just give you just a little hug. Just a little hug. Yeah. <laughs> He looks a little sad. <laughs> I'm just misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Just tapping, letting the brushes kind of um, spread out a little bit. And I'm doing it kind of in like a little clumps. If you see in the picture, there's like little sections where there's kind of almost solid coverage, and then there'll be like a little space and a, another little section. So kind of trying to do that. So I like right in here, kind of this little dip of almost solid coverage. Oh, so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I think this is fun. I don't know. I, I just saw this picture. I was like, I just thought it was cute. It's fun for winter time. We're kind of kind of moving into spring here. We're get we're we've had pretty warm weather here. This, of course, it always like fakes us out, and then it'll do a you know big snowstorm, mm -hmm. snowstorm at the end of the year, just like it did last year. We got like snow in like late was it April? I want to say it was April because I think it was past our last frost date. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and and while we do like the warmer weather this time of year, it does bring the risk of severe weather. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and there's been some pretty bad tornado outbreaks in mm -hmm. this area because you get the warm weather, then the cold comes yeah. back and it's yep. tear things up. Yeah, it can be real dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cute. I don't know why that makes me laugh. <laughs> it's just it's cute. <laughs> oh, the ears. But as little as much as you want. You don't have to do as much as we've got in ours. He almost looks like he's got a hat on. And I actually thought it would be cute to have a hat on him, too. So you could add that if you wanted to. I did a hat on my uh, chicken last week so you could see how it's done if you wanted to add it to him. be basically the same thing. Same, same type of thing. You could do the toboggan kind of hat. On him with the little things hanging down. I think it'd be super cute. Uh, you can, if you paint this, you can share it with me on my social media. I've got all kinds of links down in the description for where you can share, and I've got a whole Facebook group dedicated to it, and uh, where we cheer each other on. And when you're painting my tutorials, just so I can kind of see what you're doing and give it a thumbs up. I don't comment in there as much as I used to, but I try. It's kind of hard anymore. <laughs> I've got so much going on. But I still try to at least once a week go in there and see what's happening and comment. <laughs> Cute. Sorry, he makes me laugh. <laughs> And then there's these little snow drifts down his nose here. <laughs> Cute. Just trying to keep it random, so that's the main thing. I think with this kind of thing is just not not do too much of a pattern, 
keep it random. That's what's going to make it look more realistic. I'm going to use the kind of grays instead of just the pure white too will also kind of help with the realism. <clears throat> very lightly and tap in some very light snowy areas. And this will be similar to similar to the dots of snow that we did, the splatters of snow, and I might do splatters again. Looks like he's been rooting around in the or mm -hmm. in the snow, digging for something, <laughs> mm -hmm. digging for berries or something. Okay, getting some white now. I'm gonna go back over and add some brighter white to some of these highlights. Just kind of find the middle of some of these flecks that we've already done, and just add a little brighter white to them. to my oh, it's oh, notification. Sorry, my A-L-E-X-A -E that controls my lights in here. She just likes to butt in on the show from time to time. <laughs> Never know what she's going to say or do. be part of the conversation. Okay. All right, and then you can, if you want to, um, take it one step further and go in and use a little bit of the burnt umber and um, blue, or ultramarine blue, but more of the blue, or more of the brown, I mean, than the blue, and shadow underneath these. And I would say this would probably be important on the ones that are kind of in on the nose here, and, um, you know, any of the bigger clumps. So just kind of find those bigger clumps and just sort of, tag just a little bit of the snow itself and underneath it and it'll kind of it'll shadow it and give it a little bit more of a look look a little bit more like it's part of the thing and not just stuck on top and you can also glaze over it and just kind of darken it up in places too you don't you know we don't have to keep it this dark it doesn't have to be white all over in some of the areas that are in shadow might be a little bit more gray than white, you know, so. All right, we're just about done, honey. So why don't you go ahead and start with the questions and I'll right. kind of finish up here. <coughs> questions or chat, super chat? I'm gonna do some more splatters too. Um, both, yeah, go for All it. Right. Yeah, we do. Nice. It's awesome. All righty. <clears throat> you <They> look great. <laughs> so our first super chat <clears throat> fell off the queue, so uh -oh. I don't have to pop up, but it's from Patty. Mm -hmm. And it says, I look forward to Tuesday nights and Saturday afternoons. Oh. Thank you for your time and talent. I'm almost at my one-year anniversary with you guys. Oh. Life changing. That's awesome, and Patty. Also, I'm so glad. Thank you. also a patron, so thank you wow. so much, Patty. Wow, that's awesome. 
Very cool. Then we had a donation from Cindy. There was no special message, but she liked my pun, I'm sure. So that's probably what it was <laughs> all about. Was, it was like more puns. Yes. This is for more puns. Exactly. Why not? This is the pun fund. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a donation from Kobax. This is Nice Bear. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Kobax. And then we have another wow. donation from Kobax says good detail. Good detail. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. And then a donation Whoa. from our longtime friend Michael. Wow, thank you guys. That's thank sweet. You. you guys are very generous tonight. I appreciate it. All right. Super sweet. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of a brightness into what in the eye here while you're talking. Just so, a little bit of white. <clears throat> So here's a question. Okay. I, I think you got a pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty realistic anyways. Mm -hmm. But says if you want to do this in a more realistic style, right? would it be a matter of making the fur finer? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Making them fur a little bit finer in some of the, you know, in some of the areas where it really matters, like around the eyes and face here, I might take a smaller, like a rake brush or something like that, or even a fan brush and uh, just doing like smaller little little details around there but yeah we did end up getting it fairly close to realistic which i'm pleased pleased about okay. i should have made him a little bit wider here i'm kind of what go ahead and then the question from kaylee okay wants to know if you have any chance of doing some more ballerina paintings oh um I don't have any plans to. I did have a really cute, like, little girl ballerina that I was thinking about doing, um, but it kind of fell off the radar, so I'll find that and or maybe a bear add it to my... Huh? Or a bear ballerina. There you go. No, no you're not I'm up bringing this up, out a little bit. I kind of brought it a little too narrow right there. I want to bring that out just a little bit more and covered up some of that snow there so I'm just going to go back over it with some snow but not so far in so to remind everybody because <clears throat> we had the question earlier about where to get brushes and there's a link mm -hmm. below this video to the brush guys yes and you click that link and you there's a couple lists of beginners a beginner set and an intermediate set plus you can buy other brushes individually right and there there's a code of Angela Fine Art Yes. All one word, and that's an additional 5% off the already low, low prices. Yeah, they are. They have a really good discounted prices. And um, yeah, and they have, I have a beginner set and an intermediate set. And you you get uh, a discount on those, plus you get more off if you use the code. So, And also it lets them know that we sent you, so we get a little um, percentage percentage doesn't cost you anything extra right. but it just gives lets them know that we sent you there so appreciate everybody who uses our links down in the description yes. to buy stuff amazon and blick and mm -hmm. all that it really helps us a lot and we want to keep our videos free as long as we can mm -hmm. <laughs> and you guys are so generous to us and we and, Appreciate and a, it. And a special shout out for those who send jerky and chocolate to the post office He's box. He's just asking for more. Don't list. Don't. It's just shameless. <laughs> I know. Shameless. Shameless. But, you know, keep the videos free and me conscious. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he has been up since 4 a.m., so just may, saying. May not be true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much. This was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it too. And uh, be sure to share your projects with me. Let me know if you liked it down in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll be back on Saturday with a fun landscape. We're going to be painting some spring flowers. Yay. <laughs> so we got a winter project, and we're going right into spring. <laughs> so we're going to be painting some uh, willow trees and some blooming trees. Uh, that should be fun. And then it'll be our bonus video weekend. So we'll be doing a, a wintry landscape um, for our bonus video. So hope you guys that are patrons will join us for that, for both of those. And thanks, guys, for watching with us tonight. 
have a great rest of your evening. I'm starting to see something I want to change right here. So. Oh, we were almost oh, out. Oh, we were almost gone. We I know. were almost out. I'm, I'm <clears throat> just going to widen that out just a little bit right there. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. We're done. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.